Hi, and welcome back to PACE TV. My name is Jenny Robinson, and today we're talking about the past and present. And to do this with me is my friend and cohort here at PACE TV, J.R. Newcomb. J.R., it's really nice to see you. And Jenny, it's great to be here with you. Fun to be here on the same set with you. And we're talking about the past first and how it is, like, why do you think it's so important to us today? Uh, there's a quote that there's something about the mistrust of the future that makes us look to the past. I think that's semi-true, that nobody knows what's going to happen, so you tend yeah. to look back. And um, I think the past is important to us because we know every moment precious as we get to a certain age, which both of mm -hmm. us are. Well, so, some of you are still, you're still uh, way down there someplace in the middle age range. <laughs> but for those of us who have uh, are reaching, uh, hopefully gracefully, gracefully toward the century mark, uh, which is still a ways off. <laughs> but I look back at the past, and it's amazing. This, and of course, the old cliche is, if you don't, you know, observe, learn from the past, you will be doomed to repeat it. Well, I see a lot of that going on, That's particularly sure. with politics. That's for sure. But we certainly aren't going to talk about politics. <laughs> no. But no. it's interesting to see. Uh, there are a couple old expressions that come to mind. One is. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Exactly, and we're going to get into that. Um, but first, let's talk about when you were really young. So let's try to think way back when, and uh, what ambition uh, you know we had. Because I know for my, for me, I was uh, brought up in the fifties, and my as a woman, uh, you had four choices: you could be a stewardess, a secretary, a nurse, or a teacher. So everyone That's in my family. pretty much what it was. Yeah. So everyone in my family was teachers. So I was just headed down that little path automatically. And uh, I was, I enjoyed it. But when I got to being in the 70s and everyone is saying, do what you love and mm. find something you want to do that you're good at and just do it. And I uh, really regret that I wasn't able to go after some of those things, but it just wasn't practical. And you know, when you have a limited of money and so forth, you don't want to just try all these different things and, and hope that they're going to get you a job that makes money. That's the key. That That's way. the key. <laughs> That's the key. Well, I, I went the other way. Uh, I decided that, well, when I was very young, I wanted to work on a railroad. I had apparently read a book or could have seen a movie, I don't know, or something, and I thought, Riding around in the winter time, in a caboose of a freight train, drinking coffee with the guys, <laughs> and talking about railroad stuff, would be the, the great life. Yeah, and there, it might have been. Who knows? I could. Would you have to had to been a hobo, or would you actually? No, have a I job? wanted to work for the railroad. Okay. Who knows? Maybe I would be. Uh, I would have ended up, uh, you know, some important job in the railroad. However. Along came uh, my interest in the, in the film business. My dad was in the film business, and of course he wanted me to go to college and 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 study anything except the film business. <laughs> he says, you know, accounting and pre he was pre legal in his college career, uh, you know, it, it, it business, uh, uh, something to do, something solid that you could depend on in a, as a career. My, my math and anything about uh, medicine and science that ended uh, dramatically in algebra three. Mm -hmm. uh, in algebra three, it became very evident to me, and unfortunately, my dad, who was very frustrated because he he was a whiz with numbers, and numbers came easy for him. To me, it was a challenge. Yeah, and um, I wanted to go to school and study film and theater and stuff. And Dad said, you know. Learn to learn business, and you can always, you know, fall. And if it, your film career doesn't work, you can fall back. Well, falling back didn't seem like what I wanted to do, so I, I went with the film. Well, that was great, and that was way back. Well, uh, it was way back. It was yeah. in the fifties. Yeah. So I was growing up a, a decade ahead of you. I was growing mm -hmm. up in the forties. So you did what you loved. Yeah. Which was it ended cool. up. Um, there were times when I also and it was involved in the military. Was in there as well, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. army, but. There were times when I thought, you know, Dad may have been right. I, I, 
maybe I should be able to uh, go to work for a, you know a big accounting firm or something because there were there were some lean times mm -hmm. and uh, particularly toward the end of my uh, working years uh, many of the projects and things we were working on never came to to uh, fruition. Yeah, right. And that's Which what is happens what in happens business. in the film business mm -hmm. when you've got a when you've got a hundred scripts stacked, stacks of a hundred scripts each all over the office that are trying to get made. Yeah, right. And only one or two of them are going to get right. made. That's right. That's what happens. But at least it was fun while you, when you had yeah. good, when you had the yeah. good yeah. times. Yeah, and it, I, I don't re I have no regrets about that. Yeah, I I've made some, you know, along the way I. I may have made some of the wrong decisions and went and took course A instead of course B, or I mean, not, not a course, but a, a, a road, you know, a road A right. or a road B at, right. the, at, the, at the crossroads. But didn't hey, we all? We do what we do. That's right. We do so what we do. when you think about the past and you think about your grandparents and the lives they had before we were even born, oh boy, and what they remembered and and mm -hmm. what they if they could come back now and see Boy. the way things are. I mean, talk about speeding up time. Uh, my mother even, my mother just passed away, but she said as she was getting older, that boy, time just sped up at the end and, and things oh. changed so radically day by day. But how about your grandparents? What would they have loved and what <sighs> would they l be appalled by? Well, it's interesting, I didn't, know my dad's grand my dad's parents too well I, they were both still living when I was born uh, I never had that much chance to be around them my grandmother died uh, a few years before my grandfather my grandfather was born during the Civil War and my big regret one of my big regrets is when he passed when I was 10 or 12 it never occurred to me to sit down and ask him what mm. life was like mm. Can you imagine? You know, he was born in 1862, mm. and that's you know 25 years before we had a car. It was before uh, before electricity, really. You know, the telegraph had just come in. Not it's, not even all the states were the, the part trans, of America. Yeah, uh, the transcontinental transcontinental railroad hadn't been finished yet. I mean, that's, that's how right. far back it was. That's right. And. To think, even my even my my parents who've been gone since around 1990, uh, cell phones, uh, the, the 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 cell phone, the the iPhone, the the the, uh, uh, the other one that's not Apple, the other uh, I've forgotten what you call it, right? Android, mm -hmm. incredible machines, mm -hmm. it's, it's teeny, relatively small. That you can ask any question, yeah. and get an answer instead of having yeah. to go to the Encyclopedia Britannica and look it up. <laughs> yeah, boy, I, I sure wonder what happened to all those guys that worked th their way through college selling encyclopedias. Yeah, I they, know. they ain't out there now. I know. I mean, there's just and the the speed with which life moves on. Exactly. And the communi communication is incredible. Right now, uh, my grandmother, I know would be just overjoyed at how easy it is to clean clothes. I mean, she had to have the buckets oh. and the lye and the handmade, had to, great-grandmother, you know, made her own soap and that sort of thing, and, and it took all day, all Monday. That Monday, was Monday was wash day. Wash, and then you had to hang it up, and couldn't put it in the dryer. Didn't have dryers. And now it takes three hours to do yeah. the whole thing. And it comes out cleaner, probably, uh, or we, I don't know. They did pretty well back then. But. We had a washing machine called an Easy, <coughs> and it was a, like a big 55-gallon drum that was shaped like this, and it had rollers. Yes. And you had to take the clothes out and put them through the roller. Yeah, the ringer. Ringer. Right. They were they were two rollers, and the big fear was getting your finger caught in there, which exactly. which I managed to do in the car door these days. But okay. It was. Uh, a whole different, a whole different world. Now, was it run by electricity, or did they have to crank oh, it? Oh, this was electric. Yeah. But my mom had one of those washboards. Yeah. Those did pretty well. One of our neighbors was a retired astronaut, Gordon Cooper. His kids went to school with my kids, and we, we used to play tennis, and I, I attempted to play tennis with him. And he had a wonderful shot that he, that I called his, a, his astronaut shot, where he just hit the ball straight up in the air. And we'd all wait for it to come down, and sure as heck, it'd come down. And you'd think you're going to kill it, and 
<laughs> you'd miss some of his point. But he, he, told a, he told a great story about his mother who came from somewhere in the Midwest out to Arizona in a covered wagon. And this would have been in the 18, late 1800s. And one of her favorite uh, possessions was an arrowhead that had been shot into the side of the wagon as they came across the country. Hmm. And she lived to be an elderly woman, and before she died, she saw her, hun her, her son orbiting the Earth in a space capsule. I'm sure she from an arrowhead to a space capsule quite in impressed. one woman's lifetime. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Well, it's amazing to be able to fly to Europe in, well, from California, it takes a while, but from yeah. New York, you can get there in six hours. And uh, in the old days, it took, what, four days, five days by boat. And well, I remember when it took almost 24 hours. Wow. Uh, I was fortunate. My parents took me to Europe. Uh, my, da my, they, my dad was working in Europe at the time. And it was DC six, I think, from Los Angeles. We had to stop for fuel in in uh, Nova Scotia or someplace, and go over the to get there. It was a better part of a day. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And it was um, particularly when you decide, as we did, to spend the money in Europe, not on the airplane. It'd get a little cramped. Yeah, right, right. Fortunately, I was young and didn't, it didn't bother me. Uh huh. But a lot of people traveled to Europe on boats uh, and, and not that didn't have a lot of money. So apparently it was not that expensive to, to I mean, you didn't go first class. Yeah. It was third class. Well, you just imagine how it was, particularly like, f for instance, in the American Revolution. I mean, they signed the, signed the Declaration of Independence in, in the, around the 4th of July. But how long was it before G King George found out about it? Yeah, you know, he had exactly. to put it on a exactly. boat and sail across. Yes. And then he had to do something about it, and put on a boat and sail it across, and, and things were so slow. Exactly, and and finding out that your parents died and you're living in the West or working yeah. in a mine or whatever, you don't find out for six months that somebody died or whatever. Exactly. And the Pony Express, that was a Pony Express big was deal. great. It, yeah. It didn't last too long, but it was a great idea. Yeah. yeah. The Telegraph came along. Yeah, uh, Wells Fargo. But yeah. again, it was it was the uh, uh, the big the big phone in the corner. We, with the party line right, and with uh, the operator sticking the thing into the yeah you know. I worked I worked for the phone company at one point making making films for the phone company the general telephone company and got a little bit involved with with uh, the history of the, the phone and the switchboards and the operators we had uh, you know a whole row of operators plugging <laughs> Plugging things into in, in, into a into yeah. a uh, switchboard. Board, yeah, yeah. It was it, it, and interesting enough. Uh, I worked in the film unit, which was considered a management a job, and we were all trained to take over uh, the union classification jobs in the case of a, of a labor dispute. And uh, my my particular assignment was to be an information operator and we had a table with phone books literally from most of the country mm -hmm. and somebody said what's the number of so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so in, in st. Louis uh, you know you, you could either call st. Louis or you could get the Missouri phone book out I mean it was incredible <laughs> particularly when we had our training sessions and there wasn't a strike going on and uh, if somebody would call information, and I'd say, <coughs> information, and the guy would say, Charlie, is that you? Did I call oh, the wrong number? Oh, my God. Information, may I help you, sir? <laughs> I want an information operator. I, I am an information operator. No, you're not. Give me a real one. You know, it's, just, it's amazing. The, the idea that a guy yeah, with, would be yeah. an information operator. Yeah, right, right. Well, yeah, and that you could talk to the operator. I mean, that doesn't even happen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know another thing my grandfather would appreciate is the car doesn't break down, uh, and uh, that you. But it's much harder to fix. Much harder to fix. You got to take it in. You can't fix. fix it yourself. And, uh, and you had to know when you cranked it to let go of the crank, or you could break your arm. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, and pay phones. Yeah. Oh God, pay phones. Wait a minute. One more thing about cars. Women didn't pump their own gas. 
I remember when that changed oh, over and boy. my mother started pumping her own gas and she was 80 and I thought, whoa, because <laughs> she didn't have a choice at that point. But yeah. But that, you know, I, well, it was the Texaco Star Theater and Milton Berle and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you hate all these guys. When you pull your car into the gas station, all these guys in uniforms and yes. bow ties would come running out, <laughs> right. do the window and do the tires and do the check everything. That's right. And you're scurrying around the car. Yeah. While yeah. One guy was putting the gas in. Oh, isn't that amazing? Once your oil checked. Oil check. <laughs> open the hood. Check the oil. Do everything. I remember distinctly, my mom. Uh, sitting in the car with a mirror down, doing her lipstick in the, in the gas station. <laughs> yeah. Well, all these guys well, are running around outside oh, taking care funny. of everything. That's funny. Yeah. Well, there's uh, there's so much that uh, I think that they would be impressed at. They'd probably be appalled at uh, other things, but at the time they had politics happening that was crazy back oh, then, yeah. and people doing people lying, people uh, going behind the uh, backs, and you got away with things much easier in the old days. Now yeah, with no social media, hour. you don't get. <laughs> Yeah. No 24-hour no news uh, cycle in yeah. those days. Yeah. I mean, I remember uh, going to uh, the Saturday uh, uh, theater for the Saturday uh, Matinee. serials. Mm -hmm. You know, the cliffhangers, and there'd be the newsreel. Well, the newsreel, you'd see things. This is um, we're talking now in the 40s. Uh, of course, I came up during World War II, and there were a lot of a lot of um, graphic images coming yeah. out of World War II, including yeah. Life magazine, which, which is my parents attributed a lot of my early reading experience to Life mm. magazine, because mm. as we all may remember, it was photographs. Yeah, a lot of photographs with captions, mm -hmm. and I would say, "Daddy, what's happening in this photograph?" Mm. And he'd say, "Read the caption," you know. Study the caption and learn to read it. Right, that's true. And that was uh, a big part of how you found out what was going on. Uh -huh. and how about National Geographic? That's oh. how you found out what yeah. was going on. Oh. All kinds of things all over the world. <laughs> I was given a subscription to that by some friends of my parents when I was like 10 years old. And the subscription is going on today. It sure is. Although they've, you know, I've, I took over paying for it, obviously, many years mm -hmm. ago. but. Now the question is, why are we still getting it? Because they're stacking <laughs> up, and the whole thing's on, you know, DVD or a, yeah, a thumb exactly, drive now. Exactly. But I have a camera, that, and it has a little chip in it, this big. And on that chip, I can put 4,000 full-color, high-def photographs. Color, 4,000 on that little chip. I do not believe it, it's possible that I that know, can happen. I know. It happens, I do it, I've got the chips, I've got one of the chips that's in the safety deposit box because it's got everything on it and it's just one little chip. Mm -hmm, I mean, I, you mm -hmm. can drop it and lose it and where'd mm -hmm. it go? And you don't have to wait for it to be developed. That was it, because in the, in the film and photographic career, it was always c cases of equipment, rolls of film, getting to the lab, making prints, getting all these aluminum cases on the airplane and to get yes, where we had yes, to go. Right, right. Uh, you know, getting the, f at the end of the shoot on a location in, in, a, in a motel someplace with no air conditioning in the summer, sweats running off, your hands are in a black bag, and you're... you're Trying to develop? No, not developing, oh. but loading or unloading the, the film in the camera. In the negatives, right, Yeah, the motion, right. this is a motion picture camera. Ro oh so my you have gosh. a roll of film, and 35 dark, or 16 yeah. millimeter film, and you had to <laughs> go get in the black bag and un open the can of film, <laughs> put it in the magazine of the camera. Yeah. Then the, you take <laughs> the magazine out and put the magazine on the can. And then 400 feet later, which was what, eight or nine minutes, yeah, that's got to go and you've got to, we have got to take that, we were on location, you had to take that to rail, Railway Express, which was what we had then. I guess that's long gone, Railway yeah. Express. Yeah. To ship it to a lab, yeah, yeah, marked "Do Not X-ray" and all that stuff. Yeah, right, right. And then you had no idea what you had until the uh, the studio <laughs> called and told you, "Go, this shot works, that shot didn't work. Do this again. You got that." Yeah. Now, they can send it to you, and you can look and see what you got. Or now you can look and see what you got when you get it. Yeah, right, right. You, you can see it while you're doing and it. Yeah. 
boy, you're in big trouble if you t needed more than two or three takes to get something right. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they had the film, they had to go, they had to buy the film, they had to go to the lab, it'd be developed, to get the negative gutters, and make a work print, and do all that stuff. So that's right. Now you take a shot, you look at it, and say, ah, it's not quite right. Let's do it again. Yep. Yep. It's incredible. But it's amazing that they were able to make great films back then. Yeah. And successfully, and didn't cost three million, five, ten million, whatever. Yeah, well, you didn't have the, the uh, studio overhead that you subsequently have had. Yeah, with all the movie stars having to be paid so much. Yeah. Um, now, one thing we haven't talked about is things that haven't changed over time that still exist. And uh, to me, one thing we used to do in, w in my family, w or we were almost like a leave it to beaver family we had you know the mom and pop in the house all the time and dad came home at six and dinner was ready etc but yeah we you used to play brothers and sisters oh yeah three but three uh, other kids and we didn't do a lot of traveling but we did play games and we played monopoly and we played mm. whatever and we had about 10 games and uh sometimes the whole family would play but usually it was just the kids but i think families still like to do that I hear that they're, they they still uh, what's the name of the company that famous company that makes games? Uh, oh, it was Bar Barker Brothers was one. Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers was uh, one. That's and true. then there's uh, that's probably the big one. The one that starts with an M. Uh, uh, anyway, they uh, they're still doing pretty well, I yeah. think, and they uh, they still come up with new games. Now some of them have to pop, and you do stuff, and they jump out, and that kind of thing. But they still have to throw your dice and move around the well, board. Well, that's great because I I see so many people now with, of course, the standard joke now is people walking around with their phones, phones which yeah. I don't have mine anymore. But um, uh, I actually saw it happen in a couple. Of, you see cartoons and jokes about it. But I've actually seen it where four or five people are sitting around a table and they're all looking at their their phones or yeah. their devices, or whatever. Yeah. Some of them are even texting each other. Yeah. 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 Um, it's it's, it's kind of crazy. But there are other things that haven't changed. I think too. Um, the way a guy makes a girl. I know they used to. Uh, you asked a girl out and you went on a date. Now most people now they go out as a group. You know you want you want to see me you have to go out with all my friends too so that you all go together and parents are pretty good about uh, I think saying yeah you need to do it that way which I was kind of impressed with I thought that was pretty good that you know we used to be trusted to just go out with a guy that they parents didn't even know <laughs> oh well that's that the the uh, I guess the tenor of the times I re I remember uh, as I must have been eight or ten years old my parents had friends and lived in the San Marino area of Los Angeles, which is way to the east, near, near Santa Anita Racetrack, on the east side of, uh, the east of Los Angeles. And their daughter was two or three years older than I was. But we would get on the, what was called the big, the, the big red or the big interurban streetcar. Because back in those days, we had great rail lines in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which the politicians decided to tear out years later and now of course they have to put them back but that's another story but we would go from San Marino to Long Beach the two of us she must have been you know t 14 maybe wow. I was wow. nine wow. we go to Long Beach go to a movie get back in the, b the big big it's a big trolley car is what it was a heavy really a heavy rail car and come back to San Marino. Yeah, well, I Just hear the two of us. No. I know. Well, our, pro our, our producer, Marlene, says that she lived in Detroit and would take the train, uh, the bus, whatever, downtown by herself. Um, I have another friend in Boston that would take the, when he was 11, he'd by himself go in to watch a game at the, in Boston and come back home and parents, bye, see you later. Yeah. That was, uh, that's world. changed. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely changed. Yeah, yeah we'd go out and play and I, we'd, run around and you know, my mothers would come out the back door and scream at us or ring a bell or do something. Yeah. Come home when the sun goes down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where you've been, but that's fine with us. Yeah. You just get out of the house. <laughs> well, that was good, I think, too. And now I think most of the kids get out of the house, but then mom has to drive them to the dance class oh. and the soccer and the whole thing. That, yeah, we, we hit that with our kids with, with uh, acting modeling classes, acting classes, soccer, little league, wow. all <laughs> of that stuff. 
and getting up at, at five in the morning on a Saturday to drive way out to the middle of nowhere so my son could play soccer yeah. at yeah. eight in the morning at some place yeah. that I we had to we didn't have a uh, computer uh, GPS so it was just get get the old Thomas brothers guide out and figure <laughs> out where right. this where this place was <laughs> and get there. that's yeah. the other thing I, I besides this four thousand pictures on this little thing which I still don't believe that's happened. <laughs> the other thing is GPS. Yeah, amazing. No, I live in a place with, I live in a mobile home park that has streets that are named, um, but they're kind of like glorified driveways. They're not really big major streets. And yet, Hildegard, or whatever I t tend to call her that day, when I turn her on, she tells me exactly what street I'm on. Turn left at the next street, which is 200 feet away. There's only three or four streets there. I mean, I live there. I know. She tells me these. Oh, turn here. Turn here. Turn there. How does she? She knows the names of the streets. It's true. She doesn't always pronounce them right. That's right. That's Sometimes right. she mispronounces them. Yeah. You ought to. You ought to do it in Italy. It's pretty funny oh. to hear her in oh. Italy. <laughs> oh, I bet it is. <laughs> yeah. I downloaded the map when I traveled there, and I got to. Hear oh her wow! Say. You know, I never thought of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, talk about getting lost. I mean, you could easily get lost over there, wh even with a map. And so <laughs> it was kind of fun to be able to. She just says, "Turn right, turn left," at, and then she'll say something. You go, "That must be what she's trying to say." Yeah. <laughs> and, but you figure all of the people. I mean, it is. It would be different. If it was just you in Italy and and me driving around in, in Escondido. But there's, but thousands of people, who are talking to her at the same time we exactly. are. Exactly. And she can tell you how fast you're going, yeah. whether what the speed limit should be, and what your next stop next is going to be. You know, and, and the, the people in Peoria who are trying to find, you know, Elm Street, yeah, uh, it gets just, just as much attention as the people in, in San Diego who are trying who are trying to find That's the 23rd right. Street. That's right. She's a busy gal. <laughs> it's astounding to me how, how all that works. Well, and it's all been the last 20 or 30 years. It's true. It's true. There are so many changes and then some things that have never changed. But we're going to have to put that off for another time because our time is amazingly You're up. You're kidding. Time flies. It has flown <laughs> by. It's been fun to talking to you. you. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. And join us again next week at Case TV.